Welcome viewers, welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio, that is I. Been out a few weeks and I'm back again with a couple of short episodes. I thought we would talk about some very interesting topics. Uh, these are different uh, little scenarios I draw in my mind and different um, dialogue I have with Christians and things that just continually go through my mind because my little old brain never stops thinking about this stuff. Those of you that have watched my videos know that I am a uh, former uh, fundamentalist, evangelical, evangelist and preacher. So I've been there and I've done that and I am trying my best to educate you magic believers, those who believe in the supernatural world, especially Christians, that no God is required for a life of love and joy, peace, fulfillment, meaning and purpose in life. And the good life is guided by reason and motivated by true love, which is human love. Reality, my dear Christian friends. Today, I'm going to discuss one little quick scripture. We're going to keep it short. Uh, Psalm verse, chapter 3075 has always really um, been a very interesting scripture to me. Uh, the writer of the book of Psalm, chapter 37, said, I was old, now am I young, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Now keep this in mind, dear Christian friends, those of us that think therefore we are, see people that are Christians who believe in a supernatural provider of daddy in the sky, if you will, someone who provides your needs. Psalm 37 clearly says, righteous, those that have been made righteousness in Christ Jesus through faith in Christ Jesus called justification, who are now made in right standing with God through the work of salvation, that's the gospel, I used to preach it, will never be forsaken, nor will their seed or their progeny or offspring be begging or asking for bread or substance. Now, how many times have I run across people asking and begging for financial support from church ministries? How often do Christian preachers Ask for donations to support their radio show, their Christian business, their churches. How many times have I talked to people on street corners from different church and religious and Christian ministries who are asking for donations to support the work of the ministry, the work of Jesus Christ? Those of you that are caught into this philosophy of Christianity and the supernatural belief system. I want you to hear it from another side. I want you to hear it from the side of someone who has been there and done that, where you're at, and someone who is on the other side, now called rationality and reason and free thinking. To me, when I talk to those of you that ask for money, I see no reason for you to have to even ask any human being for financial support. Why is this? Jesus clearly said, now Jesus is the man. You the man, Jesus, right? He's the one you're to be following. He's the one you are to obey. He, according to your book, the Bible, and your belief system, is the one who is God incarnate in the flesh. In the beginning, the Bible says, God created all things, right? Jesus was there. John chapter 1 explains that all. The Gospel of John, that Jesus is the Word, and the Word dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the only begotten Son, full of grace and truth. So you believe Jesus is God's Son. If He said it, you better stand by it. You better believe it. Why? Is He a liar? What Jesus said in the Gospels, was He just pulling your string? Or was He a liar? Or maybe, just maybe, it's a complete mythology. Well, let me read what Jesus said. Ask anything in my name and I shall give it to you. John chapter 14, Jesus said, Whatsoever, speaking to believers, you ask in my name, ye shall receive. I will do it for you, Jesus said. I will provide your needs according to God's riches and glory by faith and grace in Christ Jesus. Every financial need you have should be met supernaturally 
by your divine, powerful, omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent deity. The Bible says, you will never be forsaken or your seed, your progeny, your offspring, begging and asking for bread. My question to you, please think, why are you asking for money? Why are you asking for donations? Why are you asking for people to support your missionary trip? I've had family members, I've had close friends that have sent out letters asking for people to support them and give them money so they are able to go overseas to do the work of the ministry, to proselytize the gospel message to those people that really are not interested. They just kind of want to be fed, (laughs) naturally. They want help. And some of them will just sign the dotted line to Jesus just to get some food and clothing. Why are you asking for money? Why are you depending upon people when you should be depending upon a supernatural deity? Did not God provide in the Bible? Allegedly. Did not God pour down manna or angel food in the wilderness to supernaturally provide for the Israelites while they wandered in the wilderness 40 years after the rebellion and their stiff-necked, uncircumcised ways? But did not God provide for them supernaturally? Did not Jesus tell Peter when Peter asked how to pay the tax collectors? Did not Jesus tell Peter to go down to the lake and the fish you catch, there will be a coin in the fish's mouth. And we'll, I will meet your need, Jesus said. The Bible's full of supernatural intervention, allegedly. Now for me, I don't think it happened. There's no evidence for any of that. I'm an atheist. I'm trying to get you to think. Why are you asking for money? Why is your preachers asking you to donate? And when people give you money, when I give people on the street money, and they say, God bless you, thank you, or when I go feed the homeless, which I do on Sundays with the atheist group here in Austin who feed the homeless. When I have people say, oh, God bless you, what do I tell them? Well, you can thank humans. Why are you asking human beings for help and assistance. You're not going to be forsaken. That's what your book says. But yet people give you money and substance and help you. Move by human compassion, human empathy, human sympathy. Not because of this. If it were because of your deity, it would be supernatural. You're not seeing anything supernatural, my dear Christian friends. Stop asking people for money. And when they give you money, and they give you support for your ministry or for your church, immediately immediately you say, thank you, Jesus. The Lord provided our need. No. These are people. Move with compassion and empathy. If you think it's a God and you want to prove that your deity exists, you're going to have to show me something. I'll believe anything, but you got to prove it. you got to show me something other than the natural world, other than humans giving and sharing with other humans that ask. Ask and you shall receive. Whatsoever you ask in my name, I'll do it. Show me. Why doesn't the Lord provide for you supernaturally? He doesn't. Think, my dear Christian friends. Use reason. Use rationality, which is, rationality is based on reason and facts, not on emotions and not on your feelings. You've got to look for data. You've got to look for information. And you've got to look for evidence. Has God forsaken? The Bible says clearly, Psalm 37, 25, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their progeny, their seed, asking for bread. Stop asking. Stop asking humans for help. And let's see if your God will really drop down some food and from heaven. Or maybe you'll go find a supernatural miracle Gold coin in a fish's mouth. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that say that God will meet your need. Jesus even said, consider, consider the lilies and the flowers of the field. They toil not. They, not. they don't spin. They don't worry. Does not God provide for the lilies and the flowers of the field? How much more does your Heavenly Father care for you? Does He? Or is it just humans helping humans? And that's what I postulate. And that's what I assert. That humans are given to you. There's no deity, no supernaturalism involved in this. 
You want to put God to the test? Stop asking humans for donations when you go overseas for mission trips. Stop asking people to give you money for your preaching radio show, my preachers out there. And see if there's a supernatural intervention. You know it's not going to happen. You and I both know it. So let's see. Prove to me the skeptical, secular humanist, atheist preacher here that your supernatural God exists. I challenge you. You want to you up for the test? Stop asking. Stop asking humans and just ask what the Bible says. Ask me, Jesus said. Whatever you ask, I will do it. If you say to that mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, it shall obey you. For whatsoever you ask in my name, Jesus said, I will do it. Really? Whatever? Wow. Some tough words. Do you think that'll happen? Give it a try. Show me, my dear Christian friends. Put it to the test. See if it's real. See if it's factual. Or if it's just your feelings and your emotions. And as I say all the time, nothing more than a mythology. I'm asking you to begin to think and to enter the world of reality. Humanism is an alternative to your mythological concepts of faith. Enter the world of reality where people think and people take care of each other. And you know what? Life is good. Life can be wonderful. Life can be good. Let those superstitions go. You won't fall into a burning hell. In fact, many of us are happy. Many of us are fulfilled. And we love. We know these things because they're human. Well, thank you very much for watching The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. We will continue with another episode coming up shortly. Have a wonderful day.